Distant Horizons is a Minecraft mod that lets you expand your render distance to truly insane levels, resulting in some stunning shots and screenshots of vast landscapes and planes that can stretch into infinity. It transforms Minecraft from a survival game, where most are content with just exploring their surroundings, into a game that truly begs to be explored. Add to that the fact that you can have this almost infinite render distance at 60 FPS even on a mid-range computer makes it truly a special mod. But I know you have seen this before. What you haven't seen before is this. Shaders that are specifically made for Distant Horizons thanks to a new partnership with Iris, creating an unrivaled sense of wonder when looking at the world. And I was lucky enough to not only get early access to this blend of magic and wizardry, but interview James from Distant Horizons and IMS from the Iris Project to ask them exactly how they achieved this absolutely amazing mod combo and transform a game that always came up short for adventuring into an almost Skyrim-like wonder of scale. So sit back, relax, hit that little sub button, and let me take you on a journey through how this partnership came to be and how all of this just works. So I'm sure you all have seen the original Distant Horizons release, but to refresh your memory, let me get you up to speed. Distant Horizons released in Alpha around 2021 to a very warm reception. It allows players to set render distance to absolute ridiculous levels, where you thought you were cool for rendering 32 chunks at 60 FPS, try 320 chunks at the same FPS. And these were not just skyboxes. See that tower in the distance? Go explore it. See a village on the mountain? Climb it and ruin the local harvest for them. But how does this work? How does Distant Horizon do this? In short, it uses something called LOD chunks instead of the regular Minecraft chunks, which are lower in detail and thus easier to render. The long answer, of course, as with many things, can be traced back to Team Fortress 2. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming either. Luckily though, the man himself came in and explained it for you. Skyrim was the inspiration for be seeing, okay, this is possible, this is what we could do. And the fact that, hey, there's a mountain over there, we can walk and climb it. And Team Fortress 2 was a bit more of the inspiration of the implementation because specifically Distant Horizons renders kind of similar to how TF2 renders its skybox. Okay, so how TF2 and other Source Engine games render their skybox is they render the skybox first and then render everything else on top of it. So it's almost as if you're rendering two entirely separate levels at the same time. You, you can, don't have to render quite as far in the skybox, so you don't have to worry about depth loss or things rendering super, super far away and getting a little bit uh, janky. The only downside with that is that the skybox world and the main world, I'm gonna call it, can't really interact. This stroke of genius helped this mod give Minecraft a sense of real scale while not turning your computer into a Saturday in a Soviet's power plant. But this stuff was already done in 1.0. What does 2.0 bring to the table? Well, in nerd speak, it brings transparent block support, fix the bug where when you were moving, the LOD chunks rendering would sometimes leave black voids behind, SSAO, automatic updates, and much more. But perhaps more relevant to what we are talking about today is an API to allow mod developers to interact with the data Distant Horizons generates and stores. And this is where Iris comes in. Iris, if you don't know, is an open source shader mod that works on Fabric, similar to Optifine where it enables the use of shaders. However, Iris is built to be more maintainable and modular. And more importantly, it doesn't hack the game in order to actually function, which is a whole rabbit hole I'll dive in in another video. The main thing is, as of Distant Horizons 2.0, IMS and the larger Iris community banded together to create natively supported shaders on Distant Horizons, allowing Shader Pack developers to code specifically for that API Iris hooks into, meaning they could do stuff like blending the alpha channels out of the Minecraft chunks while transitioning towards Distant Horizons LODs, while before shaders would not know what to do with these random pieces of data, meaning they would either be rendered too bright, too dark, or sometimes would clip stuff into the render terrain. But where did this partnership come from? How did you come on to the idea of like working together with a shader? Yeah, it's basically a shader mod to create 
distant horizons in a way where shaders actually work with the mod instead of working over the mod. Well, fun fact, I have been asked if shader support will happen since day one, and it's been driving me up the wall ever since. But the thing is, is that IMS on the Iris team really did all the work here. All I really did was add the API events so that if Distant Horizons changes on the back end, it shouldn't break Iris. This results in the stunning shots you are seeing right now. These are taken using a development build of both Iris and DH, using some of the test shaders provided to me. But wait a minute, Optifine already had shaders that support Distant Horizons. Why didn't Iris? Well, that's because Iris does not render anything that is not set up to be rendered by shaders in a specific way. This might not sound that positive at the first glance, but it does have a valid reason. The basic idea is they don't want anything to be rendered incorrectly or halfway. For example, the shaders that are made for Optifine can be run on Distant Horizons, but sometimes can be a mixed bag, with some of them working perfectly, some of them working okay-ish, and others just straight up not working and causing all sorts of glitches. What Iris aims to do by taking this all or nothing approach is preventing the middle of the road solutions where shaders can look like they are breaking the game or just aren't working correctly. So it either works or it doesn't. But the key knight among you might have noticed its support Optifine, a traditional Forge optimization mod. And now Iris, a traditional fabric shader mod is also supported. But if you download the mod for yourself, you will see that the mod doesn't have a Fabric or Forge specific version. How can this be? Well, they use a project called Forgex, created by Ren, and this piece of software allows any project to combine the code for both Fabric and Forge into a single jar. The trick is to hide certain files from certain mod loaders. For example, if Forge is looking for a specific file to make sure nobody is running Fabric Morge on Forge accidentally, and vice versa, as both loaders do this, Forgex takes advantage of this behavior by essentially only providing the files that the specific mod loader needs, which is a cool project I will likely cover in another video as well. But this is not the only trick that Distant Horizons has come up with. Aside from this, they also use what is called a preprocessor. Basically, when they compile the mod, from the code to the actual jar, the preprocessor decides what statements it should use and then compiles using that logic. For example, the minimum chunk build height. First, it checks to see if the Minecraft version you are compiling for is below or above 1.17. As with update 1.17, the build height could be dynamic. If the version was below 1.17, then it uses the logic right here and return a static value of zero. But if you are compiling for 1.17 and up, it uses this logic to get a dynamic value instead. This saves a lot of time on the development side. All of this combined makes it so that this mod is as maintainable as it can be. But at the end of the day, this is still a project with real people behind it. And James made it no secret that working on Distant Horizons was a stressful endeavor, trying to combine it with a full-time job. I can imagine it, it's becoming a lot of time management issues and you wanting to spend more time than you actually have the time to be able to spend on Distant Horizons. How do you manage a full-time job and a full-time job at the same time? <laughs> Uh, the short answer is I, at you least while Distant Horizon 2 was happening as I didn't, I was burning out hard. Since then, I've been purposely working to try and get that work-life balance back into a maintainable situation. Yeah, so when I started this, I was still in college and it was just a little proof of concept, little uh, resume booster. But since I graduated and like you said, I'm now working a full-time software development job, which means I'm working two software development jobs, which means a lot of the same parts of my brain are being used for a very long part of the day, which gets so much more exhausting than if I had like two totally separate things. Maybe I should take up gardening. So what I have been trying to do to try and get a little bit of my life back is during the week when I have my full-time job, I try not to work on Distant Horizons after work. So I'll have a little bit of time before work where I'll check Discord, I'll check the Git issues, I'll do some refactoring and stuff. And then I just won't work on it the rest of the day. So I can then relax during the last part of the day. A lot of people forget that there's actually like people behind these mods that are being created and very cool. And that's why you see a lot of people like complaining like, yo, when are you going to add this? When are, are you going to add this? <laughs> how, how do you deal with like uh, people coming in and telling you to add stuff that you're like, I don't have time for this? I disable comments on CurseForge. 
That's a good way of dealing with it. <laughs> and I think it's important to remember the fact that there are very real people working on some of the most impressive mods out there. Even with lives outside of their projects, they are still fighting for what they want to make every day. And the fact that James and his team of incredibly talented developers are able to crank out not only one of the most stunning mods that gave me goosebumps the first time I tried it, but also make it in a way that is user-friendly and maintainable is simply astonishing in my opinion. And is a good template that budding developers should follow. But don't take my word for it. Here's some advice from James himself. Would you like to add anything or do you have a message for budding uh, developers out there that want to try their hand at modding or do what you do? Well, I'd first like to just give a shout out to all the people who helped me along the way because most of the really cool features were actually not done by me. <laughs> so for example, the screen space ambient occlusioning, the transparent block support, all, both of those were features that were not done by me. So just massive shout out to Leonardo, Cola, Rand, Cool Guy, Lee Tom, and the many other contributors that have helped along the way. You all are the best and the most awesome people. And I could not have done this without you, so thank you. And then just to, for future mod developers, just a suggestion I would have is find a really good YouTube tutorial series, because that's how I started. And then also, please learn Java first. <laughs> if you don't know Java, this will be so painful for you. But if you have those two things, you can go quite far. Be very willing to ask questions from just random people on Discord, on forums, because you won't be able to figure this out all on your own. Ask for help. There are some awesome people out there who are more than willing to help. And once again, that is some really good advice to end on. The story of Distant Horizons is one of being inspired by how other games achieve their sense of scale, combining it with a practical mindset in order to fix a glaring gap in Minecraft's experience instead of just complaining about it, and then finding a team of like-minded individuals in Iris trying to take what's already established and making it better than it already was. Distant Horizons with the Iris shading support is not out yet, but I'd keep your eyes open because the next main update might have it. But for now, I was Lunar, you were awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.